Good evening. I am delighted, truly delighted, to see all of you here this evening because this is an extraordinary evening and an extraordinary program. A little preamble, I'm Rob Vaughn. I'm with the Virginia Foundation for the Humanities. I'm the president of the organization which produces this book festival, among other activities and programs. Uh, certainly this one is. Thank you. I'm here to tell you that this is the coldest book festival in history. <laughs> now, it's a short history, 19 years. Nonetheless, it is the coldest. And it doesn't appear to be getting any better tomorrow and the next day either. Very unusual. But spring did begin at 7.02 AM on Wednesday. I'm sure none of you noticed <laughs> along the way. And we began that morning with the 19th annual Virginia Festival of the Book. Next year. We want you to come back for the 20th, which will begin on March the 19th and run to the 23rd. So we're moving back a day. Uh, we expect it to be warmer nonetheless. I'd like to remind you of a couple of things. One is that uh, we would like very much if you would make sure your cell phones are turned off. And now is a good time to do that. I'd appreciate it. And the other is that uh, house lights will be up most of the evening here. Uh, C-SPAN is recording the event, and if you're particularly shy and don't want to appear on camera, you might duck <laughs> from time to time, but I don't think that'll be necessary along the way. We are grateful to C-SPAN, though, for making this possible. Also, uh, we are grateful to Wells Fargo and to an anonymous donor also for contributing uh, to the benefit of this evening. We thank them and all of you for being here, too. We're also grateful to the UVA uh, Office for Diversity and Equity and to the UVA Runners Clinic. Uh, we're grateful to them as well for sponsoring this evening. And we're grateful, as always, at this book festival for the 200 or so volunteers who make it possible about 15 or 20 of them work year round to get this thing organized these five days of this year. I think 206 events, so it's a moving target. Uh, we may have gone up a few. And I want to remind you that even though it's Saturday night, you still have an opportunity to attend 12 more book festival events tomorrow, <laughs> beginning at 1130 <laughs> with one of them. Most are following at 2 o'clock on. So we hope you'll come back and join us tomorrow as well. I'm very pleased this evening to welcome Mark Lorenzoni. Uh, most of you who live here in town know of the Ragged Mountain Run Running Shop and of the work that he and his wife Cynthia have done for some 30 years in this town to make it an extraordinary running community, runner's community, the Charlottesville 10 miler. Uh, the women's four-miler, which benefits breast cancer research at the hospital, and their civic-mindedness through their business and through their personal lives. So, <laughs> Mark will be introducing John Carlos. I'm also very pleased to welcome Kate Damon here this evening. Kate's business is called Hayes. It's a graphic design business, but it's also gotten involved in arranging for speakers. Uh, in this case, uh, John Lewis to be with us this evening. And we are grateful to her. You might recognize her name. She grew up in Charlottesville. And her mother has something to do with this book festival. <laughs> so. <laughs> so first from Mark Lanzoni. Good evening, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Rob, for those really nice uh, introductory comments. Well, you haven't seen the picture, the photo. Of you guys that have, we're going to remind you of it.
They say that a picture tells a thousand words, and in the case of one of tonight's special guests, maybe no other sports photo speaks to us at so many different levels. As a 13-year-old sports nut, back in New Jersey in 1968, I had several iconic sports photos on my bedroom walls and on my desk. Willie Mays, the catch. Jackie Robinson rounding third base, screeching in his cleats with his Brooklyn Dodgers uniform on, heading to home. Roger Bannister breaking the four-minute mile for the first time. Cassius Clay standing defiantly over a defeated Sonny Liston. Arnold Palmer tossing his visor into the air at the 60 U.S. Open. And Vince Lombardi being carried off the field by his Packer athletes at Super Bowl I. But no other sports photo, then or today, captures as many emotions and says so many things to us as the one of Tommy Smith and John Carlos, beaded and shoeless, holding their black glove fists high into the sky at the awards podium at the 1968 Mexico City Olympic Games. It inspires, it motivates, it educates, and it moves us. It even angers us as it painfully reminds us of all the hatred and injustice so many of our citizens endured at the hands of their fellow countrymen. And today, just as I was as 13 years old, I'm still in awe of how these two brave men took a chance and risked so much to stand up for literally millions of people. When I look at that photo, and after reading Dr. Carlos's book, I'm reminded of the notion that nothing endures more than your character, and the simple yet daunting question of how do you want to be remembered. Dr. Wilder, one of our hosts, earlier today summed it up when he said that even long after John Carlos is physically gone, his influence will be very much alive through that iconic photo. Nothing could be a more revered legacy. In the case of Dr. Carlos, who spent only two and a half pages of his entire book describing his actual 200-meter bronze medal race, his enduring character has transcended the memory of that medal, for he has so, so many other things to be proud of. Here's just a few of them. His Harlem upbringing, his 100 and 200-meter world records, his being inducted in the U.S. Track and Field Hall of Fame, him joining the likes of Nelson Mandela, Pat Summit, Jimmy Valvano, Pat Tillman, and Muhammad Ali as an SB recipient of the Arthur Ashe Award of Courage, he and Tommy um, Smith. He helped to organize the 1984 Los Angeles Olympic Games. He's proud of his countless kids that he has counseled over the years, his wife Charlene and his children. And one of his sons is here in the audience tonight, Malik. He has 16 grandchildren that he's proud of, and he has a 99-year-old mother he's really proud of. <laughs> and when you get to read his book, one of my favorite chapters in John's book was the one that spoke right to my soul. It's the one that redefined a term that so many of us use, I'd do anything for my mother. There was a, there was a scene, a, a story in there where John's mother cannot sit outside in outside of her apartment complex in Harlem because there are so many caterpillars in these trees outside the apartment that are dropping onto her and, in, and biting her and infecting her. So she's sitting inside in this stuffy apartment in the summertime and she wants to be outside. So John goes to the, um, he's a young man, he's, I think he's high school age, maybe at most, and he goes to the supervisor at the apartment complex and says, we need to spray those trees. And says, get out of here, get out of here. So he warns him, he says, I'm telling you, my mother's suffering. You've got to spray those caterpillars out of the trees and help so she can sit out there on the park bench. Forget it, forget it, who are you talking to? He says, I'm going to burn those trees down if you don't spray them. Whatever, he burned them down. <laughs> In the middle of New York, nothing personally endears us to John Carlos more than the courage and bravery that led him and his fellow Olympic medalist Tommy Smith up those podium stairs to help our country redirect its path and its history. So it's with great honor that I, along with my dear friends and fellow runners, Dr. Wilder, who's in the audience tonight, and Nancy Damon, who is here also. I don't know where you are, Nancy, but I can see Bob sitting there. Um, I have the pr we all have the privilege of presenting this most extraordinary national treasure to you, so in a second, please join me in welcoming um, Dr. John Carlos, but we're going to bring Kate Damon out here next.
Oh, you're here. All right. This is not Kate Damon.